Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're going to take a look today at migrating a Synology network attached storage device to a new one. So I have a DS214 SE right here. This is a two drive NAS and I'm going to be moving uh, to this 415 plus, which is a four drive NAS and they make it pretty simple somewhat uh, to take the drives out of the old one and put them into the new one and basically keep going. So what we're going to do uh, is take two drives out of here, move it into this four drive unit, uh, get all my data over and have everything work like it did before. And we're going to expand the volume by putting in another two drives. Uh, for a total of four. So we should be able to get more storage space in addition to a faster performing device out of the four drive unit. So the first thing we need to do though uh, is log into the two drive unit and uh, get some settings out of it. And before we do that, uh, we need to update to the latest version of their DSM. Uh, so what we're going to do first is go into the control panel, uh, go over to uh, that screen you just saw there, which is the uh, update and restore section and download the rate latest update and install it because uh, what we're going to be doing when we transfer over is installing the latest version of the software on the new drive as well. So they both have to be running the same version. So I'm going to go click on this right now and let this run and we'll come back when it's done. All right, our update is finished on the old drive, so we're going to keep moving forward. One thing I do want to point out before we go too much farther is that if you have a single drive Synology NAS, you cannot do a migration to a larger one. It's based on how those disks are configured. So in that case, you're going to have to move your data over manually. But uh, in most cases, and there's a whole list of compatible uh, migration options on Synology's website, and I'll link to that below. Uh, in most cases, you can go from a smaller unit to a larger one uh, through a migration path without too much trouble. All right, now that we are back up and running, we're going to go over to the control panel and we're going to back up our settings now. And we do that through the very same screen we update uh, the DSM through. And we're going to go over to configuration backup here and we're going to click on backup configuration. And what this is going to do uh, is create a file that I can download onto my computer that I will then re-upload to the new NAS once we get everything configured. So we're going to hit uh, yes to this. It does tell you what is uh, going to be backed up. It's important to note that uh, some things don't get backed up, like the surveillance stations. So you're going to want to copy your license numbers out if you're using that surveillance software that they have. Uh, you also want to make note that video station doesn't really migrate all that smoothly either. So a lot of things aren't going to move over that well, uh, but a lot of things do. So our users, our groups, uh, some of our backup settings are all in there. I do use the network backup quite a bit. So all of the stuff that I'm using uh, is going to carry over just fine. But this will tell you, tell you exactly what is getting backed up. Anything not on this list that you're using, uh, you're going to need to make note of because you'll have to reconfigure it on the new drive. So it's going to read our system configuration here and it should give us a file that just got downloaded. And now the next step is we're going to start taking the drives out of the old one and putting them into the new one. So I'm going to get my screwdriver out here and get started on that. Now I should add too that it's important to shut down the old one before you take it apart. That is a very important step to keep in mind while you're working on this stuff. Another important thing is that you have to make sure that you get the drive order correct. So drive one needs to be put into the drive one slot on the new one and drive two needs to be put into the drive two slot on the new one. That is a really important step to make. Uh, what they do have on here, and it's hard to see, but uh, they do have etched into the side of this unit uh, is which drive is which. So this is hard drive one on the top and hard drive two is on the bottom. So I'm going to remove a uh, hard drive one first. I'm going to put it into uh, one of the little drive trays on the new one, install that one, and then I'll do the second drive. So let me go and screw some of these things and we'll come back when we're done. And one of the things I like about the multi-drive units is they have these really nice drive trays that require no screws or anything to get up and running. So all we need to do here is just position our drive correctly in the tray, uh, just slide it into position and uh, make sure the screws are lined up properly there, which they are. And you just take out these uh, little um, drive uh, rails here and just snap them in and everything kind of stays put, which is really, really nice. We're going to get uh, both sides of this drive put together and then we're going to go grab our uh, four drive unit here and slide it on in. So let me get this fastened in and we're ready to go there. Open the door up. They even uh, keep a, a screwless entry for the door as well. The nice thing is they don't use magnets either. So they just kind of uh, use these little rubber stoppers to get in there. And we're going to uh, line the drive up, hopefully put everything in correctly and uh, insert drive number one into uh, spot number one on the four drive unit. Uh, they don't have numbers on here, but they have little dots to represent which one is which. So now we're going to repeat the process now uh, with drive two and then uh, boot this up in a minute. All right, so we've got the new drive booted up with the old drives inside of it. And you'll see now I've got a blinking status light here and Synology makes a really 
a handy little utility here called the San, uh, Synology Assistant. And uh, what we can do here is uh, connect to this drive now. It's saying migratable, so it's recognized the drives. And we're going to double click on here, and it should pull up uh, the little screen here to get us started. So it brings us to a web page uh, on the new device, and it's going to give us some information about what we've got on here. Uh, we're going to step through the process here. We're going to say migration and keep most of my files, which is selected. We definitely don't want to do clean installation. That would be a bad thing. Uh, so we'll click over here. It's going to download and install the latest DSM version. I'm going to uh, create a, a new password, which does make me a little bit nervous because I already had a password on there already, but I am going to go set that up right now and uh, hit install now, and we'll see uh, what happens here when everything gets going. So this will probably take a little bit, so we're going to let this run. Uh, once things come back, what we're going to do is install the backup configuration we had before and then see where it takes us after that. Okay, so we've got now the new drive loaded up. It's put the, uh, the DSM operating system on there, and we also have all of our files available to us. Now, I haven't yet restored uh, all of the stuff that I had from the old one as far as the settings were concerned, so we're going to do that now. So even though this looks like the old one, this is actually the new one. Uh, my data is intact, which is the most important thing. It even kept uh, all of my, my folder structures and everything else. So the migration, it looks like, has so far succeeded. If nothing else, I've got my data. I can kind of pick it back up. Uh, to where I left off. All right, so what we're going to do now is go back to uh, the control panel and head over to the update and restore section here. And we've been in the screen a lot so far in this project. We're going to go to configuration backup again. Now, instead of backing up the configuration, we are going to restore the configuration from the old device. So we have this file downloaded onto my little Mac here. So I've got to go find the uh, the settings that I downloaded, and I'm not sure what they are. It looks like they, there it is, Disk Station DSS is I think the one from earlier. So we're going to hit OK, and now it's going to give us the options of the things that we want to restore. So I think I'm going to do everything because I had a pretty nice configuration before, so I'm just going to check everything off. The most important thing for me is the backup stuff because I have a bunch of network backup uh, services set up. Uh, what I do is I set up a, a VPN back to my office, so I actually have two of these devices backing up from one to the other uh, over the internet through a VPN that I set up, an open VPN, uh, and it's been working really nicely. So I'm going to click OK here, and it's going to tell me that all of the uh, previous settings are going to be restored, which means that we're going to have to kind of reboot and start over again on this uh, device, not necessarily from the standpoint of reconfiguring it, but it's going to shut everything down, uh, install these new settings, and then reboot. So I'm sure this is going to take a few more minutes, so we're going to take a break here and let this process continue. All right, so we are now back up with our old settings, and I'm going to pop back into the control panel here and see. My most important thing is my backup settings, so I want to see if my Backup and replication settings are still intact, and it looks like they are, which is great. So I usually back up to a USB disk locally, and then I also uh, go out to what I call the vault, which sits at uh, my office about 20 miles away. So it looks like everything is back where I left it, which is awesome. So now I think the next step is uh, to put in the other two drives and see if we can expand things out, because right now this is pretty much working as exactly like the old one was, which is great. Uh, so now we're going to see if I can expand that volume a little bit more. So let's get to work on that. And one of the things you're supposed to be able to do with this is put the drives in while it is on. They call this hot swapping, or hot inserting in this case. So we're just going to pop these two drives in. And hopefully we won't see any sparks or anything like that. So we'll get the second drive in here as well. And now what will happen is once these drives spin up, we'll go over to uh, back to the control panel and see if we see them uh, popping up on the list. So I'm seeing the lights now coming on. So disk 3 is now coming on. And then we should see disk 4 spin up. There it goes. So now I think we might be able to refresh the screen. Uh, and I'm not sure how we might do. There we go. They popped up automatically. So now what we're going to do is we have 1 through 4 here. And I'm going to skip back to my volume here. And I am pretty sure I can uh, add drives to this. So I'm going to expand the volume by adding hard disks. So I'm going to click Next. And it has disks 3 and 4 here because they haven't been assigned yet to uh, the array. So I'm going to click Next here. And on, uh, it's giving me a warning that those two drives, those two disks, three and four, are going to be erased. That's okay, because there's nothing on them that I'm really worried about. And uh, what it's going to do now is expand my capacity to eight terabytes, which I am very much in favor of. So we're going to hit Apply. And uh, it's going to warn me that encrypted shared folders on the volume will be unmounted. And I'll have to put them back on later. That's fine. And it's also going to shut down services for a few minutes. So we're going to hit Yes. 
and it's going to save it and then we're going to uh, likely have to take another break as it does its thing. Uh, we are seeing here now though it's giving us the status update that uh, the disk uh, three and four are initialized and it will likely uh, take a little bit of time to get those uh, volumes online and you can see here as well we're uh, currently in a status of expanding and I think this probably will take uh, some time to complete. All right, so I had a wardrobe change, not because I spilled anything on myself, it's because I let this run overnight, so I uh, figured it would take some time to get that uh, volume expanded, which it did take some time, it was really running kind of slow, so I figured, you know what, just go to bed, let it do its thing, and come back in the morning and see what we got, and the best news is, is that we got something good here. So we have uh, 8.2 terabytes now of available storage, the array is healthy, uh, all my data is exactly how I left it, all my backup settings are there, so uh, really smooth and easy transition, everything uh, can play over the network just fine as well, so I've got my video yearbook here from high school in 1994 and as you can see everything just uh, plays almost like it's local on the uh, computer itself. It's really fast. Um, it's a really impressive uh, performance out of the 415 plus. So really easy process to migrate. I just took the old drives out and put them into the new one, migrated it and then uh, expanded the volume. No problem at all. Uh, you do want to check that link that I'm going to put below in the description just to make sure if you're doing anything uh, different from what I'm doing, like if you're running video station or surveillance station or some of the other features on uh, the NAS that might not support those settings being backed up, you want to plan ahead on that. So check those out. Uh, down below. But as far as I'm concerned, this was a really easy process and I hope you got something out of it. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.